Let's look now at bioaccumulation and biomagnification. Now, bioaccumulation is the buildup of a chemical substance within the tissue of an organism over time. So this it takes place inside an organism. So if it's in a polluted area, these chemical substances over time build up or bioaccumulate inside that organism or inside that species. And there are many examples of this, and one could be a fish, if it's eating in a contaminated area, that plankton that is contaminated stores the pollutants and the fish continue to eat that plankton, and over time it will bioaccumulate in that fish. Now, bioaccumulation involves a single organism or single species. If we start looking at the entire ecosystem, this is where we start to consider biomagnification. The pollutants build up over the food chain. So the pollutants in the food web reach their way to the top of the food chain or food web. They magnify as they work their way to the top. And we're going to look at this example right here. If we look at this ecosystem and we assume down here we have some primary consumers, grasshoppers, that have one P per grasshopper, they get eaten by these secondary consumers and each of those four grasshoppers transfer their pollutants up to the secondary consumers. And then the tertiary consumer, it eats the secondary consumers and if we notice there's four here, when it works its way up, it gets to 12. And now our top of our food chain or food web has that build up of pollutants at the very top of the food chain. Now what this does is that it becomes more concentrated the higher up the trophic level and it becomes magnified as it works its way up. And then what we see is we see issues with the top of the food chain. A lot of pollution at the top of the food chain. And we're going to look at some of these pollutants, but when we are talking about pollutants, we often measure in this unit PPM, parts per million. So one part pollution per million parts, whatever that part is. Could be grams, could be milliliters, but we often measure in parts per million. So let's look at some of these pollutants that exist. First of all, pesticides. And pesticides are used to do just that, get rid of pests, animals or species that are pests. Some pesticides bioaccumulate, and one example is DDT, which is no longer allowed in our country, it has been banned in our country. But DDT and many other pesticides, what they often do is they dissolve in fat tissues, and not in water. So what this means is that once the pesticide gets inside an organism, it remains in the fatty tissues of the body, and it can't be removed through sweat or through urine. And this type of pesticide can be very, very harmful as it works its way up the food chain. Other pesticides may not bioaccumulate, but they may just be toxic. And so they don't build up inside an organism, but they are immediately toxic. An example of this is diazinon, which is again now banned, and we often find that over time these pesticides, though they do kill the pests, often have issues with the ecosystem. So let's look at DDT because DDT was a very common pesticide. And DDT, though in small doses may not do much damage, if we look at this picture here, we see that down here in the water we have 0 0.000003 parts per million in the water. Now that DDT though, if it's taken up by the zooplankton, all of a sudden becomes 0 0.04 parts per million. And as it works its way up, it becomes more and more common within the organisms. 0.5 parts per million, 2 parts per million, and eventually it works its way up to the top of the food chain, and that very small amount of DDT in the water is biomagnified, and we see it's 25 parts per million. Now what's the issue with DDT? Well, DDT is an example of an endocrine disrupting compound, an EDC. And an endocrine disrupting compound is a compound that gets inside the endocrine system, and the endocrine system is the hormone system. 
And these EDCs actually disrupt the hormones by mimicking the natural hormones. So the body's endocrine system believes it has the natural hormones and it either stops producing or overproduces other types of hormones. Now what this does, and this is where it's caused a lot of problems for birds of prey, is it affects the development and reproduction of organisms. And what we find over time is that the DDT in these birds of prey will actually affect the shells of eggs and the egg shells actually become weak. So during reproduction, the birds will lay the eggs and the egg shells are quite weak and they can actually break and not survive. And so DDT is just one example of an EDC, an endocrine disrupting system. There's others, and we're going to look at these in a little more detail, that include DDT and also a once common PCB. Again, another endocrine disrupting compound. Well, there's one other type that you might be familiar with, and they are heavy metals. And what a heavy metal is, is in the middle of the periodic table, a group of very high density metals like copper, lead, mercury can be found in the middle of the periodic table and these can often get into an ecosystem. Now something like mercury in its metallic form can come from various sources of industry. With mercury it actually will be converted by a bacteria into an organic compound called methyl mercury. Now the problem with methylmercury, once it's organic, is then it can be taken up by plankton and moves its way up the food chain. So especially critical in a aquatic ecosystem because once it's in the water and in the plankton, it's in the food chain and it can bind to proteins. Now mercury itself can often be found in large tuna fish, large swordfish and whales, these we often find the top of the food chain contain high levels of mercury. Another place where heavy metals might be found are things like paint. Lead was once a component of paint, old paint, and plumbing fixtures were once connected using lead. Now often these are already currently removed from most old houses or buildings, but you have to be cautious. If you are going into an older house or building, the paint that's peeling off the wall may contain lead, the plumbing fixtures may contain lead, so there's hazards in those as well. And again, lead is very, very dangerous if it is consumed. So touching old paint or touching plumbing fixtures is not going to harm you. It's once that lead or these heavy metals get ingested inside an organism, inside a species, that they cause their damage. And we're going to look at more details of these pollutants in class.